<laughs> Welcome to the bigger picture. Thank you for I having am, me. Yes, yes. Aaliyah Sheffield. I mean, even just your name, it just sounds classic. You know, oh, really. It does. Great. I really debated about using my name. So that's that's great to know. <laughs> yes, it's excellent. Good choice. Now you Def Jam recording artist. Yes. Yes. I mean, your sound has been so refreshing to hear. Thank you. Okay. It is what I feel the industry is in need of. Okay. We need that refreshing, that 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 truth yes. that you sing. And you know, your sound, it's it's grounded. And this generation of listeners, I really feel like they need to hear this. So, I mean, you're both vulnerable and strong. You mm -hmm. have this balance within your sound. And yeah. um, I can tell that your songs come from a real place. Yes, they do. It's usually like, you know, if you had a diary, but it's a, and you, but you just decided to show the diary to, to pretty much the internet. <laughs> You took the words. That was later on. I was going to talk to you about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely, yeah. um, it's uh, definitely stories that are just very true to my day to day life in my personal. Yes. A glimpse into your journal. That's what I was thinking of when I listened to your EP. Your EP. These songs are for anyone sick of Earth. Yeah. Now, ugh, honey, especially these past few years, I'm sure. Yeah. Ninety percent and more of the population can relate to that it's been a rough rough couple of years <laughs> <laughs> so now you have one song that went viral two years ago mm -hmm. earth is ghetto and now yeah. you have a video yeah. dope video dope visual thank you i want to hear you explain the title uh the title to the song yes um it was just kind of like me just hearing people say earth is so ghetto and <laughs> I bet the aliens ride right past here and me literally walking down the street and going to the store and the store being barred up and me having to figure out how to get what I need from the store without knowing Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> that was Where were you? Where were you when this happened? I was in Mexico at the time when I was oh. writing and my house would happen to be on 15th street, which is the street that I mentioned in the song. And I was literally writing about my, whatever was going on in the world at, at the mm -hmm. time, which mm -hmm. maybe it was like December, 2020. So we were in the thick of it. So, yes, so it was, um, yeah, I started writing that song and while I was walking down the street. And by the time I got home, I had a piano melody and everything. Yeah, I mean, I see you playing those keys, too. Yeah. You play with such passion. You know, of all the instruments, why piano? Did you know as soon as you touched the keys? Was it when you were a child or how did that um, come about? I actually played a few, uh, I play a few other instruments. Um, like mm -hmm. I play clarinet and saxophone, um, bass guitar. But piano has always been the easiest to write on, like mm. to write on, too. Um, and once I figured out what I was doing on that, um, now I kind of stick to that instrument, even when I want to try to learn guitar more. So can we expect to hear more of these other instruments that you play in songs to come? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe someday uh, at the moment, I haven't really you haven't played that. around with it yet? I yeah, just figured yeah. I'd ask since you, you mentioned it. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. No, at, the, <laughs> at the moment, I haven't really thought about it. Um, I do have like a song on YouTube of me like playing guitar and singing, but that's like the only one. <laughs> but I haven't really uh, written a lot of songs off of piano that weren't like based on piano. Piano. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Boo Boo the Fool, girl. <laughs> I can't tell you how I say this, this is still in my vernacular too. It's okay. Still, I say it all the time. <laughs> That's what I mean. I mean, you can ask my ex. I used to say to him all the time. You think I'm boo boo the fool? Right. So where did you get this saying from? Was it from like which family member? Where 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 did oh, it come that's, from? That's my mother's favorite saying. That <laughs> and I didn't want to get a little friends. She she, <laughs> she will go and say, Oh, I never said that, but she but even she will admit, like, oh yeah, I did say that a lot. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> my mother's favorite saying is that and I ain't one of your little friends mm -hmm. can we expect to hear a song like that <laughs> <laughs> I ain't one of your little friends everybody would love that I'm telling you 
<laughs> well, I mean, I say it in Boo Boo the Fool, but I don't know if I, I, I don't know if it would be. If you'd expound on that, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it would be a bit too much to to expand on that. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was your childhood like? Um, it was interesting. Every, like growing pains and all of that. Um, I moved around a lot when I got older. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up in Savannah. Um, okay. Spent most of my life there, um, and um, I was born in Jersey, but I spent most of my life in Savannah. And when I got older, I was going, like, I moved to New Jersey and mm -hmm. spent most of my music career there. Savannah's like, gorgeous. It is. It's a nice town. It's a nice. It's a nice city. It's, it's a little gorgeous. boring sometimes, but it's nice. It's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean it's if you're going for some place to relax and you know what yeah, else is nice for some place to, like, to relax but I yeah. will say as if you're growing up there you're like you just kind of want to see more that's, mm -hmm. that's one thing about Savannah it's like you're gonna if you grow up there you're gonna want to see more mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, well I can understand that I can understand that but it is it is still a beautiful city it really yeah, very is beautiful city. um now I hear so many hues in your voice mm -hmm. when you sing. So what artists have you listened to and who has left the biggest impression? Um, I listened to a lot of Nina Simone, mm -hmm. Franklin, uh, India Irie, uh, Lauren Hill. And these were like, and Trace Chapman, Chapman, like for female voices where they were like people I listened to the most. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, Excellent. I'll say probably Nina Simone and um, Aretha Franklin maybe had the biggest influence, especially Nina Simone with her writing topics and stuff like that. That's where I was about to go. I was going to ask you uh, as far as writing was concerned, because she is a heavy duty writer. I mean, way nobody was paying attention to her at the time. They should have been paying attention to her because she had a mm -hmm. lot. Yeah, she sure did. She, she sure did. No, but yeah, I definitely paid attention to a lot to her um, her lyrics and uh, the topics that she talked about in the songs. What touched you the most about um, her? Her authentic authenticity, because she was real even when it was uncomfortable and mm. it was uncomfortable. I can see that in you. Yeah, I appreciate people who are true to themselves and allow themselves to be true, even when it makes them uncomfortable or even when it makes other people uncomfortable. I always appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes through in your music, too. Now, if you could describe your music and your sound in one word, what would it be? Um, thoughtful music. Mm. Like I can't, uh, I would say it's it's soulful too, but I'd say that it's um, also very thoughtful or it's very, or even relatable. Like it's it's just something that it, you think about what people are going through and you write it down. You think about mm -hmm. what I'm going through and you write it down. And that's a big part of my music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Absolutely. It's a, very mindful, very. Um... I'm an overthinker. So, <laughs> well, well, it's, it's, you're very, um, you strike me as a person that's very present. Yeah, I can. You always, yeah. I'm always, um, I'm always uh, thinking about what's going on. I can be very present, but at the same time, I can um, not enjoy the present at the present at the same time, but I am always thinking about what's going on. It's like always a hundred tabs open in my brain. So, <laughs> I was going to say you're multitasking. Yeah. So many, yeah. It's so many tabs open on different issues in the world. And sometimes I wish I could just tune it out, but it's yeah. just so many tabs open. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can understand your, what you mean. Like it is, it is. It's tough, you know, especially when you're an artist, I'm sure. You know what I mean? It's like your yeah. your lens is different. It's very you know? different. Now, after listening to your EP, it has it has a lot of healing qualities. Mm -hmm. So in what ways was it therapeutic for you? Um, it was therapeutic for me because I was going through a lot of changes. I had moved, lost my job, quit drinking. Um, uh, just 
it, it was very just a way for me to express all of that stuff that was going on in my life. And so that helped out a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned you're very candid uh, and forthright, I should say, uh, on social media about your sobriety. Two years, by the way, congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'm, I try to be candid about it because a lot of people are scared to even admit to themselves that they have a problem. And I was just scared to admit that I had a problem. So I want even even if they see something for me about it I want them to be able to think about it and think mm -hmm. do I have a problem or if this person is talking about it is this something I should be concerned about and it just yeah I like I just like being open about it mm -hmm. it makes me feel more comfortable about being open about it yes and I think that you are a great representation of that you I know and and the more comfortable people are within themselves like you said they can admit it to themselves like you yeah. said it, it's it's rough it's it's hard it's a, it's, it's something to, to grapple with. I'm sorry it's, it's a very hard thing to admit especially with something like alcohol because it's so socially acceptable mm. to as much as you want um so a lot of times people don't even realize they have a problem because of that yeah, yeah I agree there's varying degrees of alcoholism too mm -hmm. you know you don't have to drink every day to still have a problem. You know, you can still abuse yeah, it. Yeah, that's very true. You know? Um, now, when did you realize, though, that music was your way of, like, I'm going to get through this. Like, I can I can use this as a tool. Did you mm -hmm. have, like, did it just slowly come about? Or was it, like, did you just pour oh, yourself out on pages one day? And then you're like, you know what? I found a way to deal with this. Um, I've kind of always used music as like a healing thing uh, since I was in like uh, middle school. So I've always been kind of using uh, music as an escape. Or, mm -hmm. or anything. But um, when it comes to alcohol, I think uh, maybe I just uh, got tired of uh, not being in control of it. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that was more so the, the thing that pulled me out. I just got tired of not being in control of myself. Mm-hmm. Mm mm-hmm. Now you have written the song, like your song that you have out never drinking again. That I mean, when I heard just those first two bars mm -hmm. about I want to get my life right mm -hmm. after tonight. Yeah, because I was I mean, when I was writing the song. So <laughs> I was like, I had to wait till tomorrow. I gotta finish this bottle first. <laughs> <laughs> that's so deep to me and it doesn't even have to be somebody that has an issue with alcohol or alcoholism mm -hmm. excuse me or or any other kind of substance it can be yeah, anything it's, it's, that you're it's, not it's, facing yeah it, it can really be anything um because in that in that time I was already um experiencing a change in my life and my music mm -hmm. career and stuff like that but I was still struggling with um just not having my life together and not being able to to focus on the music career because I was too busy um drowning in my own life and my own issues so um that just kind of came from that um <laughs> and even when I even when I uh recorded I recorded a full acoustic video for it and even when I oh, did you I didn't see this yeah, it's on my YouTube channel. And I did it for like uh, So Far Sounds. And even then, um, I wasn't sober yet. <laughs> so when I recorded the video, you can hear me at the end go, and that was a lie. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not a lie anymore. But just uh, even just promoting that song just reminds me that um, I am getting my life together. And um, it's a constant process. You know, and the process is beautiful because again, till now, you had to go through xyz mm -hmm. you know um yeah, it's painful yeah a lot <laughs> i can hear it in all your music so i can only imagine yeah. you know it's, so, been, it's been a long a uh, 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 long ride for me i've been making music for over 10 years so that's also contributed wow. to a lot of stuff now you used to also sing covers yes at a piano oh, bar yeah, that, was, that was my job that was my day job or my night job so but my only my only job i um i did like uh piano bars i taught music um but i did all of that for like 10 years wow Wow. That's of, tough. That's tough work. I have a lot of live experience with music. So. <laughs> well, you are definitely in the right field. I'm so happy that you have been able to put together a project 
and I'm yeah, it turned out the way I wanted it to. It's it's perfect. It really is. You know, it doesn't sound like it's been meddled with, so to speak. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, so I, I got to work with some really great producers, and um, I had help putting together like the art, the um, EP art, and stuff like that. So it helped to have a team and stuff. But they uh, really let me uh, take control, creative, creative wise. So, and I really appreciate that. Excellent. Excellent. Now, I'm going to touch on this and then we're going to move on because I don't want to lead in the whole conversation one direction. But we were talking about therapy and we were talking about vices. Do you think that, I mean, because we find that with artists, I know that I'm sure you know, mm -hmm. artists and their vices, it's like this very common thing. It's very commonplace in the industry, mm -hmm. right? So why do you why do you think that is why what do you think the tie is for me the tie was I have really bad social anxiety mm. and like that so I was and I was working all the time as a performer and always in bars and stuff like that yeah. um often um I got paid in drink tickets sometimes so just like them saying yeah. go ahead drink this will help you <laughs> better about getting paid yeah. and shitty and also help you feel better about the crowd and stuff like that so for for me it was a lot dealing with social anxiety and stuff like mm. that and depression about where I was in my life and I think mm. a lot of artists face that and uh, they're trying to cope with their lives and also uh, follow their dreams at the same time and it can be a lot yeah yeah you hit it right on that I mean as far as, as, far as trying to like you said you have social anxiety you're out there on stage you have some people have stage fright they're trying to smooth out their edges mm -hmm. so yeah that that makes complete sense like you said and then it's always really understanding when it comes to that um it, it's it's a interesting life to live and even if you finally get all of the things that you want you still are you still struggle and mm -hmm. really find a, a healthier ways to struggle to deal with the struggle hmm so that that would be your advice. That would be your advice to somebody that's getting in the industry or or working in the industry. And like, what would I guess what I'm asking is is what advice would you offer someone that's in the industry that's finding themselves in this space? I would uh, definitely say if they can afford it, get therapy. Mm -hmm. Like make mm -hmm. that one of your business expenses. Um, mm -hmm. Get therapy if you can because it will help a lot. Um, It'll help having someone to talk to if you do deal with like um, uh, addiction or anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Make sure you see somebody about that. If once you start having the means to see somebody about that, make sure that's the first thing that you do. Excellent. Excellent. Don't even feel guilty about having to see somebody about it. Just be open about it. That's Say, right. I have the means. Now that I'm not a starving artist anymore, or now that I'm a little more, like I'm a little more financially stable mm -hmm. I'm right. going to attempt to take care of my problem my problems it may not go perfectly but I'm trying and I think more artists should admit that and do that and we then there should be more I think as far as even within the organization giving support to artists because how many artists have we heard you know what I mean that just you know yeah. things did not go the way they should have they weren't healthy so I think that yeah. I think that the organization can also offer some um relief in mm -hmm. that way um but uh you wrote a song anti-hero mm -hmm. now let me tell you all your songs are amazing there's an overuse of that word's amazing but no mm -hmm. they are uh anti-hero though was i mean you said villains sound like preachers teachers I don't know what it was about this song. It resonated with me so deeply about having to be the, the villain in somebody's story and that how villains didn't always start out to be villains. Mm -hmm. What was going on <laughs> in your head that you wrote just, this song? I'm always really, I'm always really interested in um, when people do something that people who, so there are always people that have, um, fans and stuff that look up to them mm -hmm. and 
And anytime they do anything wrong, it just slides them a little further into the villain category. And I won't mention who, but it's, <laughs> it's, it was somebody at it was somebody at the time that was um, really being uh, kind of just completely torn apart in the media. And then at the time, I was also going through like a, um, a Marvel <laughs> movie binge. <laughs> You know, um, I'm going there next, right? I was going there. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going through like a Marvel movie binge and then watching this and this whole situation uh, kind of unfold. And I was just like, it's so similar. It, there's like just listening to villain um, speeches and, and the story arcs for why they became villains is so mm -hmm. similar to watching this person be completely villainized and turn and, and finally just cave in and be the villain that everybody's been saying that they were. Um, and it just, it just made me just, just feel like it, it's just so easy to see how people can um, turn into villains. They can yeah. be, they can, all, they can always start as out as somebody's hero, but if they make too many mistakes, um, they'll be the villain. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Now we need to get you in a, in, we need to get this song in a movie. We need to, <laughs> I, would, I would really love that that would be like a dream my dream is to be somehow involved in the marvel universe would you do some acting no i cannot i, I want to do acting um but i no marvel i would i would if they gave me a role or if i got a role i would try my hardest to act um, <laughs> I, I definitely want uh, my music to be in, involved yes. somehow so that would like be a dream Yes, well, it's just, it would make you feel for mm. that anti-hero, you know what I mean? It would make you feel like, you know, <laughs> like all the stuff that they did is like, doesn't even matter. I mean, some of them made valid points and they just went about it the wrong way. You're right. You're right. And I feel like, yes, we as humans, we do that sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. sometimes make valid points, but then they get so wrapped up in, to, in making a point that they destroy everything else around them mm -hmm. because they're trying to make that point. So mm -hmm. just yeah. very interesting to watch. Now, do you read comic books? I do. I haven't read them in a while, but um, I tend to get some. I, I went to, I have some at my at my mom's house because I left all my comics there. And mm pretty much to move cross country so but I, I do tend to read comics sometimes oh that's great like so I mean can we expect that with earth is ghetto I want to read because I oh, see that you have a book club I really want to do that one day I don't know if it's overkill because the song has been out for a while but I do want to do that one day because so many people have made like art and all types of um stories and stuff based around that song now it's just it would be interesting to do that overkill let me tell you not enough people have heard the song yet you you See, right. it might be old to you it might be old to you but you're not, right not you're everyone right. has heard it <laughs> you, you're, you're absolutely right sometimes it does feel like it's definitely old to me and i'm like okay let's <laughs> move on and talk about something else terrible. <laughs> Another song. <laughs> but um, you, you're definitely right on that. Um, everybody hasn't heard it. So um, I should I, I do take that into account. But maybe one day um, uh, I'll think about that. <laughs> yeah. And now why did you start the book club? I started the book club because I read a lot. I haven't read as much this year because it's just been a lot going on. And mm -hmm. I haven't been able to focus on books. But um, I'm always reading and I had so many people asking me because they just saw the top five elements of Earth is Scatter. I was like, can you read this? And you read that? I'm like, yeah, I read that. And there's just so many books that I've read that other people were saying that I should read. And I was like, yeah, I really like reading. I like reading a lot of sci-fi. So I wanted to make a page to start about, to talk about some of the books that I read. I think it's a great idea and it's going to encourage people to read. I hope so. And how how much better does it get? How what's the fastest way out of the ghetto? Uh, reading is literally the fastest way, and I wish the more fastest way. Read. I really do miss, wish more people would read, and I wish a lot of people would read like fiction too, because fiction just opens your imagination to so many mm -hmm. things. Like nonfiction is great, but sometimes it's just the idea that fiction can really open your imagination. Yes, it can. Yeah, and there's nothing bigger than the imagination, not even space, I swear. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, 
what is what's that saying? If you want to hide something from people, put it in a book. Mm -hmm. You know, why it's so important. That's really true. Now, with your pen game the way it is, mm -hmm. would you write a book? Is that something you'd consider? I didn't want, I wanted to do that one at one point in my life because at one point in my life I was doing like freelance writing on the side as a job. So I um if I wasn't a songwriter, I would probably try to lean more into writing. Yeah, yeah. Because because you are you're telling stories essentially within your songs. You're just yeah. setting them to melody, you know, with a gorgeous voice, might I add. Thank so soulful, so soulful. Thank you very much. Um, now I was going to ask you, your message is strong in your music. Mm -hmm. Explain the responsibility of an artist. I think the, the responsibility of the artist is to first be true to themselves, but at the same time realize that they have the power to influence other people. Um, so um, maybe not be careful, but if you do write something with um, a message that everybody doesn't agree with, um, be open to listen to what people mm -hmm. are talking about. But I don't think that means that you should not release that song because it's something that somebody doesn't agree with. I just think mm -hmm. that you should be open to the conversation about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. I agree. You know, it's a good, you know, these certain songs can be great conversation starters and mm -hmm. conversations that sometimes we don't really want to have, but when we're forced to have them, there's growth. Yeah. And I get that a lot. Like I get that with Boo Boo the Fool sometimes and people mm -hmm. are like, oh, this is toxic and all that. But I'm always interested in seeing um, the conversation that people end up having whenever I share that song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. It's important. That's why your work is so necessary. And I am honored that I had the opportunity to talk to you today. Thank you very much. Thank I'm you so that. very much. Talk to you. <laughs> Do you have any shout outs that you want to give before we wrap up? Um, Thank you to my manager who puts up with my crap. And <laughs> and I have some really bad jokes and all of my team. And Thank you to Urban Magazine for having me. Yes, yes, you're very welcome. Well, thank you, my dear, for stopping by The Bigger Picture. I, you. Yours truly here, Dakari Eli. And um, everyone, if you have not already heard, go check out the video, Earth is Ghetto. Please go listen to the EP. These songs are for anyone sick of Earth. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much again, Leah. Yes, stay blessed. Okay, thank you. All right, love. Bye. Bye-bye.